Guys, what's going on? It's Andy Elliott. Welcome to the One Percenter Podcast. Today, I'm here with my man, Lincoln. This is one of the greatest leaders in the industry. If you want to be a badass leader, you want to watch this whole video. Check it out. I like to get paid. That's why I work every day. I'll be making money till I'm in my grave. Don't All right, guys, check this out. Say. I'm here today with my man, Lincoln. I want to tell you something. This is like my brother from another mother, all right? I want you to understand something. Some of us sometimes are a caged lion, and I've watched this guy get uncaged. I've watched him cut the leash, and it's been really cool to watch. Look, a lot of you right now, you're killers, right? Like, you're a killer, and you know it, but you're not acting like a killer. And, and you're not leading your people very great. And when I first started talking with him, dude, there was a savage inside of him, and I was like, man, it's time to cut the leash. It's time to unveil, you know, really who you are and let go. And, dude, he is blown up. It's absolutely insane. His team, his team looks up to him like how my team looks up to me, which is very, very rare. And I want to tell you, we're in an era where we're in massive shortage of leadership. So if you want to be a great leader, Lincoln, I want to introduce you. Number one, tell us Thank who you, you are. Absolutely. And then I want you to drop some leadership bombs, yeah, some sure. things that are allowing you to not only for break sure. records yeah. across the country, but just do big shit and build yeah. a, a badass team. Yeah, for sure. Hey, Lincoln Stahl, I'm down at uh, Capital Chevrolet, a managing partner down there. Listen, first off, you know, we, you talk about being a leader and talk about, you know, the, the – uh, the, the challenge that comes with that, the burden that comes with that, because as a leader, it's not just, you know, you don't make a business card and put leader on that, on, on the business card. You know, you have a burden, you know, to lead your team. I mean, to lead, I got 225 employees and I take it as a burden every single day that I got 225 employees that need to feed their family. So I need to be strong for them. I need to have a good game plan for them. I need to show them how to be better, how to be good, you know, family members, take care of their family, their kids, their their wives, their husbands, whatever it may be. And it's a burden. And if you take it seriously, which I do, it's hard, man. It'll wear your ass out. It's not a, it's not as easy. And the moment I got promoted and the moment I looked at it, and that was the reason I wanted to get promoted, I wanted to have the power through the platform of being a general manager or, in my case now, a managing partner. I wanted the platform and the ability to be able to do for others, whether it be my employees or the public or whatever it may be. But, you know, to change someone's life is, is tremendously, it's tremendously rewarding. But, man, it's a lot of work. And uh, you, you go through a lot of sh There's a lot of people out there that as you're trying to help them, you know, they're not going to appreciate it. You know, they're going to talk sh about you, you know, run around and, and be unloyal. And, uh, you know, I was actually going through it today with somebody. And you just you, you can't let the unloyal affect you. You just got to stay the course, man, do the right thing. And, uh, you know, cars, they're going to sell themselves if you're doing the right shit. You're going to sell cars. You're going to make gross. You know, you got to get a chip on a chip on everyone's shoulder. So we were talking about it earlier, you know, from talking to Ian, actually. You know, I moved I moved from Houston to Austin, and I came into a dealership where I had to walk on egg sales. You know, new corporate company, had to kind of figure out how to navigate that, you know, you know, make them happy, give them what they wanted, of course. You know, but I inherited 200 employees that were incredibly proud because they had done some good things before I got there. You know, so infiltrating this ultra proud culture that they had was hard. You know, you know I felt like sincerely a lot of the people were waiting around to see the fail. You know, because that's how people are. A lot of people will wait around to see the fail. Oh, just, just ride it out. He'll be gone in a few months, and we'll get back to doing shit the way we were doing it. That's right. Well, I stuck the course. You know, and a year and a half later, I'm talking to Ian, and I literally hang up the phone. Because, cause, hey, the other thing is, as a leader, sometimes you got to have people that can t motivate you. I always say this. Everybody needs a coach, man. Yeah, I've got absolutely. a fitness coach. Yeah. My wife coaches me. My thousand percent. And my team coaches me. A thousand percent. Like, you need that person around you that can push you. Yeah. Because it's exhausting sometimes and draining when you're the one – pushing and doing for everybody you need that one person there um, that crazy son of a bitch in your ear absolutely or shout out the first lady you know your wife's got to yeah. be supportive of you you know you come home you got to be able to you know tell everybody the and, and i want to ask you something man how yeah. proud is your wife of you to oh, see yeah. you no she's number go. one number one fan number one fan um you know also you know whether i take it the right way or not every single time eventually i take it the right way i might get my feelings hurt but she's also the same one that you know when it when I needed to be told, quit being a bitch, quit being a bitch. You know what I mean? She, yeah, my she wife every day, person. dude. She She's, hits me in the ball sack. Yeah, 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 yeah. I actually saw a video. Yeah, physically, physically literally, yes. literally. Yeah. Hey, and I want to say something too, um, real quick. So you're in the automotive industry, right? Yeah. So everybody knows I'm obsessed with the automotive industry, all sales industries, but I love the automotive. That's how I was brought up. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments, tell me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm gonna tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now. 
210-0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. Um, you know, Lincoln, how, how's, your, how's your company doing? Where do you guys rank right so, now yeah. with, with, this, with this new you, pushing this new culture, so really we, breeding yeah. these fire-breathing dragons? Where do you guys rank so, out across so the we country? So we were living, we were living in the, you know, seven, eight in the country range. We would kill our market, I mean, our market, you know, and that was actually, it actually made a lot of my guys lazy because they'd see the reports and they go, oh, we're 200% of the market, you know, and it just wasn't, that wasn't who we were competing with, you know, but we were living at seven, eight in the country. And uh, like I said, I, I, I literally, I'm not, I'm not just trying to blow up the brand because, you know, he do that on his own with his skill, but I literally get off the phone with Ian and I literally, I literally put the chip back on my shoulder that I had suppressed for a year and a half, trying to make everybody happy. Not wanting to hurt anyone's feelings. Want everybody listen wanting to, to this. fit in, uh, you know. Wanting to fit in, not wanting to, you know, not wanting to get any blowback from corporate. And I literally, I got off the phone with Ian, and I was ready to run through a wall. Literally, I remember the hair, the fucking hair standing up on my arms right now. And I literally got off the phone, and I said to myself, "They hired me for who I was. I mean, they wanted, they didn't hire me to come change. They hired me to be the motherfucker that that I was. Yeah, so not I, the watered down version. So I of literally you. came out, like honestly, God, that it was, it was the first." the first week of the month and I came out I think we finished uh, the top five and I came out and it was amazing for me to see because I've never been I've never been you know detached from business I've never been the three to eleven guy I was always the guy I was always the guy that was there first leaving at eight desk and deals taking turns you know writing fucking service ROs whatever I had to do I was that guy but the moment I got off the phone and I cranked it up to be me it was literally for someone who's engaged it was literally crazy for me to see immediately, bam, all of a sudden we started selling more cars. I got more engaged and I told the story. I said, hey guys, we all need to be held accountable. And as good as I think that I am at what I do, I got off the phone with this guy and he didn't even have to say anything to me. Just talking to him made me understand that I'm leaving a lot on the table. Yep. You know, and I started pushing just a little bit more. And the moment I started doing it, my guys started pushing more. So we finished like fifth. And then the month after that, we finished third in the country. And last month, as, as some of you know, you know, last month we finished number one in the country. We number sold fucking a, one. Number one in the country, Chevrolet sales. We sold a, on a Monday, we sold 65 new and 15 used to, to be number one. And man, you, you know, you want to talk about like just the, the mission to get there. But now, of course, we're not done. No, can I, so, can I, but I want to say something because I want you to go. But everything falls and rises on the leader. Everything is the leader's problem. The leader's also the solution. People can get fired by the boss. People can also fire the boss. People can leave and go to another place or they can love where they freaking are at. Absolutely. And dude, when this guy cut the leash, I'm telling you, dude. And by the way, um, on Facebook, if somebody wants to follow you on Facebook yeah. or Instagram, just link and stall. Yeah, tell them how super to easy. Link, link and stall on Facebook, S T A H L. There's probably not too many links in there. S T A H L. You yes, guys sir. need to go check out his content right now that he's dropping. I'm telling yeah. you, it's not only inspiring, it's refreshing, and it's shit you can use in your company right now. Yeah. And I want to say one other thing. If somebody want, if they're like, hey, dude, I want to work for a guy yeah. like that. Let's like, like, I want to work for a guy like that. How do they reach out to you? So, so literally, I had a, I had a young man message me, great sales guy. Marcus Lee, he's been through your stuff. Yeah, he uh, reached out to me on Facebook. It was it was it was fucking badass because in my mind I thought to myself, this will help motivate my people and it might help me recruit some people. Yes, that anybody was, watching yeah, this, if you're looking for one of the greatest go, leaders in the country to go work for, go. I want you to DM let's him, go. okay, on either Instagram or go to yep. Facebook and message him on Lincoln Stall S T A H L. Yep. I'll and, fly, man, I'll fly. Listen, I'll fly you in. I'll pay for you to move. You know, Dude, I, I, he's I'll savage, give you, guys. I, will, I will give you a, a legit, and I think this is important for people, I will give you a legit career path. And if you just follow. And, and a great life, dude. Yeah, man. If you follow what I say, like, we'll get you where the fuck you want to go. And, you know, you're going to make you're gonna make more money. The, mon the money's the easy part. You're going to make more money. Yeah, dude, but, man, hey, you're going to be a part of something special. Yeah, yeah. For, for forget companies. about money for yeah. a minute. The money's going to be amazing. Yeah. But being around a great leader that will literally demand you to get better every day, yeah. that'll push you, positively peer pressure you to become a better person in life, somebody that lives by the example, who has a great family, who has an amazing wife, who takes care of his wife, who takes care of his children, who takes care of his people, who stands up and fights for the people who are important in his life, and literally carries himself as the example and doesn't double standard people. Hey, you do that yeah. and I'm not doing it. 
Yeah. He does what he tells you to do, and he makes sure that he does it more than you so you'll know. The great leaders, they always work twice as hard as their people, which yeah. means once your people yeah. get on you, you'll yeah. work even harder. Yeah. Absolutely. Like you're always showing them yeah. that whatever you ask of them, you're even going to do more. That's yeah. how much you love them because yeah. you want to show them that it's possible. But this guy does that, okay? It, it, it doesn't exist anymore. So if you're looking for it, make sure you reach out to him. Yeah, man. And, uh, and, dude, you don't even need any sales experience because I watch sure. guys Absolutely. that have a great attitude, yeah. that are hungry, yeah. that are willing to put in the yeah. work, and I watch you turn these guys yeah. into killers. Yeah, come smile. Have a great – I mean, have a, have a smile, a handshake, you know, and a fucking work ethic, and let's get after it. I watch you know, the videos, be, be man. Be good people. Like, I surround myself with good people. You're a good person. If you're a good person, you come to me. I will find something in my organization. That will feed your family and you know you know send your kids to school and all other stuff if you're a good person well, what, you know? what would you say to some some weak leaders that that need to level up i mean for real and by the way you no know, in in time we're going into 2024 yeah kind of where the automotive market is currently yeah. right with inventory with yeah. rates with weak leadership what is a message that you would give to automotive because i got tons of automotive people yeah. and in all other industries watch this because yeah. it really is in all industries but but specifically for automotive what would you tell a leader that's not breaking records that's not number one in the country how they could get so there? so it's funny we're going you know the strike right now when covid started everyone was selling cars covid started i was sitting in a meeting with the group I was with and the CEO was, you know, saying, hey, this is going to happen. We need to cut back on this. We need to cut back on that. Watch your, watch your advertising. Don't hire no more people. we got to thin out the crew we have now. And I sat here listening to all this shit being cordial, you know, and uh, we got done. And one of the other GMs in the, in the group says, so do I got this right? If we break even during this time, is that considered a good job? And the CEO said, yes, sir. And in my mind, again, not wanting to be rude in a, in a room full of peers and my boss, in my mind, I thought, can break even. Like, like I'm about to fucking make a name for myself. And I had all my guys during COVID under, and I, and I used to tell them, anyone can do this shit when it's easy. It's about to get hard. Let's find out who the fuck can do it when it gets hard. I love it. And and when we did that, it's I told everybody it's going to create a name for you. You're going to make you're going to make a ton of money. It's going to create a name for you. It's going to get you promoted. It's going to just open Sony Passport, and that's exactly what we did. Now we're going to the strike, and as the strike was coming, I got a real good friend who works for the factory. He kind of tipped me off that it was coming. I started buying inventory. Everybody else is curled up in a ball, taking that ass whipping. You know, trying to sell all their cars for, you know, four times too much and they should be just charging it for it. And I'm taking, I'm going to take everyone's market share. I'm buying, I'm being aggressive. I'm buying cars. You know, you see me say it on Facebook all the time, but I am, I am literally about to become a fucking bigger victor and not a victim. So you can curl up in a ball. You can be a victim. You can blame it on the market. You can blame it on the inventory. You can blame it on COVID. You can blame it on interest rates. There's a thousand excuses you got out there. Get rid of the fucking excuses. But your reality is all that matters. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, a thousand percent. Yeah, I want you to remember that. So if you're a leader right now, listen, man, the way, your perception is your reality. I know you've heard that, but, dude, he's psycho-obsessed with how this shit's going to go down. And, dude, like, there's no other way. Yeah. You can't be yeah, convinced of it. percent. Not a fucking chance in hell. No matter what happens, no one can sway you nope. that there's a single problem nope. that can't be fixed by yeah. great leadership and good people. No, because the thing is, I honestly believe we leave some. I, I still believe, like, I know that I leave a ton on the table still. Yeah. I know my team's leaving You're a ton on the table. You're fighting for that We're too. working to get it. Yeah. But there's a whole bunch of people out there that are just satisfied with being average. And I, and I just don't understand it. So I got three little kids. I got a 10-year-old son, 8-year-old daughter, and about soon-to-be 7-year-old daughter. And how, how in the world can I look at my son and say, let's go, boy, let's get the fuck after it, and then go to work and be a lazy fuck? Like, I, I literally just don't understand. Like, like, when you tell your kids to go do something and you want them to get A's instead of B's, you know, when you want them to be the starter on the football team and not the second stringer, pick it, pick it, whatever it is. You want them to make the dance team and, 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 and you know, be the one that, to get accepted and be on the cheer team and all that shit. But you're there telling them how hard they got to work. What kind of an example are you? Like, like to me, there's no, there's no excuses. Like, my kids, I bring my son to work with me every single Saturday, you know, and I want him to see. Like, this is, this is we're, we're going to kick ass. That's and, uh, you know, we're going to kick ass. My team's going to kick ass. And, and I tell everybody, like, man, if we lose, we're going to regroup and we're going to come up with a better game plan. But it can never, ever, ever, ever be we lose because of lack of effort. With lack of heart, lack of passion, and lack of fucking work at the end of the day. Like, quit trying to figure out how to be super successful. Quit trying to – I mean, leaders out there, you get that title, you work your ass off to become a general manager, a general sales manager. That don't mean shit. So you can shut that shit down and go home early. Like, I don't – like, to me, yeah. to me, every dude, time I've title gotten promoted, don't mean shit, no, nothing at all. Nothing yeah. at all. Like, to me, the title – the only thing the title gives you is burden. 
Yeah. You know, you're the first guy catching shit when stuff goes bad. You know what I mean? Or, or, unless you just don't care. And, but if, and you, if care, you have a title and you're watching this and your ass isn't breaking records, you're letting your whole fucking team down. Yep, absolutely. Okay? And everything is your fault. Every bit of it. Because, okay? again, it goes back to that burden. Yeah. You have the burden of the game plan. You have the burden of putting a talent management team in front of your sales guys to help make them successful. You have the burden of making sure everybody executes. You have the burden of providing all the tools for these, you know, these folks and making them use them to make them successful. That's about it on you. Yeah. You know, there's some self-starters out there. There's a couple. There's, you know, I got half a dozen guys and gals, and no matter where they went, they're going to be successful. Yeah, but, but usually but it has a lot to do way. with who's in charge. thousand percent. Yeah. thousand and, percent. And I want to say this. So if you're watching this right now, I want to give a massive shout-out to this guy, and I want you to know that, listen to me, what I consider a great leader, me, Andy Elliott, is a man that takes care of his family, a man that shows up with special energy at the end of the day for his wife yep. and his children, who also goes to work runs harder than anyone else in the store with more love, with better intentions, who self-develops every day, who, who leads from the front, but also as an example, a person who's always raising the standards, yep. okay, in all areas of life, who, who's close to God, who works out, right, and takes care of their health. Because if we're not healthy, no. well, none of this is no. even possible, Shit. not with our no. family, not with our friends, not with our work, yep. and also who's never satisfied. Never. I'm, I'm, I'm my own worst critic. I'm I'm borderline. My wife will tell you I'm borderline. I'm right on the edge of an unhealthy obsession with being fucking successful. Only the greats, yeah, right? I'm right on that edge. Only baby. the greats. You know I mean? uh, they have that. Yeah. That's it, man. And that's yeah. something I have it too, man. I'm I'm never. I I uh I have like when I look in the mirror, I have a six pack. Yeah. I have body dysmorphia. Yeah, me too. I look in the in the mirror me and too. I see some yeah. three hundred pound yeah, lady. Me too. I'm, I'm like, oh way. my god. I'm same this way. My, my daughter like, took a picture of me. One, my like, daughter took a picture of me one day. I didn't, and I was like, I said, that's me. <laughs> like, You're I like, like, delete that. Because yeah. I see myself in the mirror. I'm like, you fat. F <laughs> no, seriously. But, but that's yeah. my point. Is that yeah. like, yeah. is that like we're never yeah. satisfied? It's yeah. never enough. But guys, anybody right now, Lincoln Stall S T A H L on Facebook. Go check him out on Instagram. If you're a badass manager, leader, and you're looking for a great home, reach out to him. Hey, by the way, listen, man, you got to be the best to work for him. And if you're a sales guy, okay, or sales gal, and you're wanting to kill it, reach out to him. Time and experience doesn't mean shit. If you got the best attitude in the world, if you got a good perception yep. in the world, if you want to train, self develop, get yep. better, let's go. You guys reach out to him, Lincoln Stall. Let's Love go. you, brother. Appreciate you. Appreciate brother. it, man. You, man. Appreciate you. See you guys soon. Let's go, guys. Hey guys, I just want to tell you the true one percenters, you made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor, share it with the friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video, comment below so I know who you are, set your notifications, and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon.